Hey guys, welcome to this very cool video where I'm going to be showing you how to make your own curve brushes for chains, rope, hair, whatever you can think of. So let's get right into it. This is uh, the very basic, the Polymesh 3D star that we have here inside of ZBrush. And I want to create this very like nice bevel chain. So I'm going to go to the initialize properties. I'm going to modify the resolution to one for all of this. I'm going to say key cube so that we get a very like nice single cube with only one side. I'm then going to go to make poly mesh 3D, make sure that this is a poly mesh 3D object. And I'm going to go to C modeler and I'm going to go to R to scale this. I'm going to make this a little bit longer, a little bit thicker. And on the side view, I'm going to make this a lot smaller. Something like that seems fine. Now I'm going to turn on polyframe so that we can see what we're doing. And what I want to do is I want to cut in a hole inside of this a chain. So I'm going to go to a space bar and I'm going to select inset. And on the options down here, I'm going to select poly group all. By doing this, I can do this like uh, inset on the face and it's also going to be working on the back face right there, which is very important because now we want to push this in. And we're going to push this in with QMesh and again using Polygroup All. When we push in and both faces meet, boop, there we go. We got a little nice hole here on our chain. So now I'm going to go to the bevel option. I'm going to uh, go on top of an edge. I'm going to press a space bar. And I'm going to select a bevel over here and we're going to bevel this corner right around there. And then if you just click on the next edge, it's going to give you the exact same size, which is very important to keep things as standard as possible. On this one right here, I'm going to do a small one. And again, just click back here to get the exact same size. And then this outer one, I actually want to go a little bit like harder. So something like that. And there we go. So that's it. We've successfully created our very first link right here. Now, the secret is as follows. First, I'm going to control W to make sure that everything is a single polygroup. And then I'm going to press control shift and I'm going to duplicate this up. Now, some people like to have like 90 degree chains like this. That's perfectly fine. I personally like 45 degrees. So I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to rotate this with shift 45 degrees. Then I'm going to duplicate this, get that right around there. And if I go over here, I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees to the other side, which in this case is minus 90. And that's it. We got two very simple links. Ideally, when you're doing curve brushes or insert multi mesh brushes, which is what we're doing right now, you want to keep the poly count low because we're going to be duplicating this along like big surfaces and um, you don't want to like make this thing too extreme. So once we have this, what I'm going to do is I am going to go to uh, B in brush. I'm going to create an insert mesh brush right here. I'm going to create a new brush. And by the way, this brush is going to be available in the resources of our Discord. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel and you're not on the Discord, check the link down here and you're going to be able to join an amazing community. So I'm going to press Control W again. And now let's just jump into like a normal sphere. So I'm going to grab like a sphere right here. Let's make this a poly mesh 3D. And of course, the insert multi mesh right now is just inserting links. But we want to make sure that this becomes a curve or a, a rope, or in this case, a, a chain, right? So I'm going to go to stroke and under curve options for this particular brush, I'm going to turn on curve mode. And when I do that, as you can see, I now can generate this very nice curve. However, there's a small little issue right here. The curve brush will always try to generate a, a uniform like distribution of your elements. And sometimes, depending on how you model things, they won't perfectly match. For chain links like this, it's very important that we move the move step a little bit so that these little guys right here actually like link together with the next one. So I'm going to go back here to stroke. And if I change the curve step a little bit lower, let's say like point, I think point 0.75 is going to work fine. And we draw again you can see now my chains are actually linked together. And that's it. We got a chain brush right here. Now, there are a couple of modifiers that you might want to like uh, take into account. So for instance, when I do some crazy ropes like this, especially when you go like really, really crazy, you might get some like weird, like hard edge over here. One of the things you can do is you can go to brush. And I know this is underneath my face right here. So let me move this to the other side like that. There we go. So if we go to brush and we go to curve, you can actually change something called the modifiers. And here on the curve resolution, we can increase this a little bit to say, let, let's say six, and that's going to give us a soft curve. Look at that. So instead of having this very like a uh, jaggedy effect, we're going to have a, a soft curve. Just keep in mind that this will distort your chain a little bit. So you might see some links like this one right here. It's getting a little bit stretched in a little like weird way, but again, not a bad thing to have, right? Like it's uh, it's looking very, very cool. So yeah, by doing this, as you can see, we can get this very, very cool effect. Now, let me show you something real quick. This is a little bit, I wouldn't say more advanced, but it's a little bit hidden. So this is not something that you find everywhere. If we have this sphere right here, and let's say we want to add a rope on a specific section, like for whatever reason, we have like a patch right here, and we would like to have the rope following this exact same shape that we have 
on this mask. One of the things I can do is I can press Control W, and that's going to create like a nice little poly group right there. And if I then go to deformation, I can do a polish by groups. And what that's going to do is going to create a very nice division there on my poly group. Now, what I can do is if we go back to the stroke options, there's this curve functions and curve functions are like little tools that we can use with curves to generate at the place where we're going to be like projecting our uh, chain in this case. So I'm going to remove border increase edges. I'm just going to say frame mesh and look at that. It automatically built a curve along that surface. So if I click it, there we go. We got the chain going around the whole thing. How is this useful? How could this be useful? Imagine you have a piece of armor and you have a really clean border with polygroups. You just like add a little trim around the whole thing by using this frame option right here. So that's the first like uh, tool that I want to show you, which is this uh, insert mesh. Now let's do a very quick rope, which is also a very basic thing that everyone should be able to do here inside of ZBrush. I'm going to go into my shapes again and I'm going to go to a cylinder uh, right here, a normal cylinder. So... There we go, cylinder 3D, perfect. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up. So I'm going to scale this to a division of two. Now, this is important because as you just saw with the chain, if we don't make sure that this thing's like fit properly, when we uh, do the the like the whole like curve function, sometimes they won't match perfectly on the, on the top. So in this case, I'm going to go to the transform options. I'm going to go to twist and I'm going to click. Oh, yeah, right. Let's make this a poly mesh 3D. I'm going to go to twist. And we're going to twist the top part like this 180 degrees actually let me check right here actually i think we can keep it like this i think this was it so let's go back here i'm going to press Control shift and we're going to rotate this around and we're going to move this two units to the side like this and now uh, again going back to this thing well let's center the pivot point of course and we're going to go back to our deformer now we're going to twist and we're going to twist this 180 degrees and the ideal thing here as you can see is that we have the beginning and the end on opposite sides but it catches like we're going to find the next element on the other side now on this one i'm going to delete the caps so let's remove this and just delete the caps that one and that one i'm going to say delete hidden over here and that's it and this is what we're going to be making a multi-mesh brush out of so once we have this uh the next thing that we need to do is just again press b and we can say create a new insert mesh i'm going to create a new one because the properties are going to be a little bit different but you could create like multiple ones and append them in a single one so we you can switch between the different ones so for instance on the chain one if we did like two or three different models of chains we could very easily vary between those so on this one right here i'm just going to go to stroke again turn on a uh, curve function Let's go here to a sphere, to our test sphere. And if we draw the curve, you're going to see that we get something very, very, very ugly. And the reason why this is very ugly is because it's not like perfectly calibrated. So in order to calibrate this a little bit better, first, let's make sure that the curve step is set to one. And I'm going to go back to the brush menu over here. And under modifiers, I'm going to use a weld points and stretch. And again, change my curve resolution to six. And by doing that now, as you can see, we're going to get a very, very nice clean rope. A very common advice that people give when you're doing this is to go all the way down here to deformation and use a little bit of inflate. If you feel like your rope is a little bit too thin, you can just inflate this around and look at how nice this new tool works. Now, keep in mind that this also works for um, other elements such as like or using other features like the one that I just showed you. Here's another like cool like trick that I can show you. Let's go. Let's go to another sphere. Let's make this a poly mesh 3D. There we go. And let's say we're doing, again, like a, like a piece of armor or something. So let's imagine that this is our element right here. We're going to do like a, like a bracer. So I'm going to just like mask out the shape of this like plate or bracer or whatever this thing is. Just like this. And once we have this, one of the things that we can do is we can go to Subtool. And we're going to ex ex extract this. So I'm going to extract this with zero thickness. Very important, zero thickness. Hit Accept. And this one we can delete. So now we're just going to be left with this one. And one of the things that we could do, for instance, is again, go to deformation, polish by features to get, generate like a nicer effect. And now let's go to geometry, Z remesher. And we're going to see remesh to create a, a nice clean border. That should give us a nice resolution right there. We can even bring the poly count quite a bit lower. There we go. I'm going to do half right here. See if we can make it even lower. There we go. And now if we go to C modeler, for instance, and we go to Q mesh polygroup all, we can polygroup this and press alt while we're doing this so that we get different polygroups right here. So now what we can do again is go to the um, stroke options. Well, 
Let's go to our curve brush first, this one right here. And we're going to go to stroke, curve functions, polygroups, frame mesh. And look at that. We get double frames and we can click and we're going to get our ropes along both elements right there. Of course, here, one of the things I need to do is I need to make my brush a little bit smaller. Remember, the size of the brush is going to give you a really, really interesting effect. And look at that. We get stitching all the way across. And now we just go with deformation and we can again inflate this a little bit to generate a very nice effect. Like how long, how long would it, would, would it have had how long would you... Oh my god, English is failing me. Imagine how much time you would need to spend to generate this sort of effect inside of Maya or something like that. And here, by using these functions, look at this. We get this very, very cool effect very, very quickly. So yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe. We're really close to our first goal, which is 1K subscribers. And uh, we're preparing a lot of cool stuff. So thank you very much for your support, guys. Make sure to check our premium courses, our Discord, our Twitter, everything down here on the description. Thanks, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one.